Now we kind of cross over into a little different topic. What is the shape of the universe? Okay, now that we mentioned what happened, what events took place, we talked about what, what proof we have of all this. What is the shape of the universe and what is it made up of? There are, <coughs> there are three major shapes that the universe can have. One is called spherical uh, shape. So the best way to visualize a spherical shape is like imagine the surface of a basketball or the, the surface of a, uh, the earth, okay? What properties with, will that kind of space have, okay? What one thing we see is if you draw a triangle on the surface of a basketball and you measure those angles, see how the lines are kind of curved in? If you measure those angles and add up those angles, they will add more than 180. So it's not what you've learned in regular math. In regular math, you've learned this. Angles of a triangle add to 180, right? This is called Euclidean geometry. But that's only true if the universe is flat, okay? If it's a spherical symmetry, they add more than 180. The other kind of symmetry is called saddle shape, uh, negative curved space, okay? This one, if you draw the triangle, the angles of the triangle add less than 180. So think of the saddle that you sit on the horse. That's the negative curved space. The other thing that's true for the positive curved space, back to the spherical symmetry, okay? If you, if you shine two beams of light that are parallel, they will not stay parallel. They will converge together eventually, you see? So there is no such thing as two parallel lines on a curved space. They're going to converge and cross over, you see? On a flat space, two parallel lines will remain parallel forever. On a negatively curved space or hyperbolic geometry, otherwise known as, uh, the two parallel lines will drift apart they will diverge. See, parallel light beams diverge away, parallel light beams converge, okay? So these pictures I've taken and I've put them here. Into this picture. You see? So this handout that I have, I've drawn all three different properties together. The angles of a triangle, add up 180, the parallel lines converge, and then if you draw a circle and you draw a diameter of the circle, if you, draw the, if you divide the circumference by the diameter, you get a number less than 3.14. You see? And then the angles of a triangle add up 180, parallel lines stay parallel, you draw a circumference and you draw the diameter, the circumference divided by the diameter gives you pi the regular pi that we know of, 3.14. Negatively curved space, parallel lines diverge, triangle looks like that, circumference looks like that, diameter looks like that. I'm gonna come back to this picture and then show you a couple stuff there. So those properties are all shown here. There are three major shapes that the universe can have since it is hard to conceive of four dimensions because the universe has four dimensions, length, width, height, right, and time. Time is the fourth dimension. It actually has uh, seven more dimensions, but that are curled up. So the total dimensions of the universe is 11, okay, according to string theory. You need 11 dimensions for the laws of physics to work out. But those other seven dimensions are all very small. So the four dimensions are the big ones. But in, in order to visualize how can four-dimensional space be flat, we try to visualize a two-dimensional space and ask, how can a two-dimensional space be flat? Then we can conceive of from there extended. So two-dimensional flat space will be like the projector, just flat projector, you know. So it has the properties that were shown in that, on that page. 
Angles of triangle add to 180. Parallel lines remain parallel. The circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. The number of galaxies increases linearly as the distance. I'm going to show you what that means on that picture again when we go back there. So if you draw the number of galaxies as a function of distance away from you, it increases linearly. OK, positively curved space resembles the surface of a spherical ball. So a two imagine a two-dimensional, the two-dimensional surface of a spherical ball. That will be the analogy of positive curved space. <coughs> Angles of a triangle add more than 180. Parallel lines converge. Circumference is less than pi times diameter. That means pi is less than 3.14. Okay? In, in school, when you're learning geometry, they teach you the geometry of flat space, otherwise known as Euclidean geometry. In school, you don't learn positive curved geometry or negative curved geometry. The only time you're going to learn that is if you're a math major and you go to upper division, you take pure math. And you, you, if you're a pure math major, in the third and fourth year of your schooling, you're going to learn more abstract math. That's the first time you learn this kind of math. It's very, very abstract. So they don't teach it to anybody. They keep it away from you. Okay? But in order to understand the universe, you need that math. You see? The number of galaxies increases logarithmically as the distance. I'll show you that on that picture again. Negatively curved resembles the surface of a saddle. Angles of a triangle add less than 180. Parallel lines diverge. The circumference of a circle is greater than pi times the diameter. Therefore, pi is more than 3.14. So in that kind of space, pi will not be 3.14. It would be larger. And then the number of galaxies increases exponentially as the distance. And then again, I'll show you that on that picture. The other thing that's true, interestingly, this thing shows. If the universe is closed or positively curved, light rays from opposite sides of a hot spot bend toward each other. So imagine there's a certain hot spot in space, hotter than the others. You see parallel lines come, and then they start converging. So when we look at it from our point of view, the hot spot is going to look this large. You see. So objects in space that are very far away are going to appear larger than they actually are if the universe is positively curved. If the universe is flat curvature, psh, objects look just as big as they appear. If the universe is flat, light rays from opposite sides of a hot spot do not bend at all. So you see here, as a result, the hot spot appears to us to be larger than it actually is. It's going to look larger here. Here, it looks just as large as it should look, you see? And then here, if the universe is negatively curved, the light rays are going to be this way coming towards us. So when we look at it, objects will look smaller than they actually are, OK? I'm not talking about like planets that are in our solar system. This object has to be very, very, very far in order for the curvature to make a difference. You see? So as a result, the hot spot appears to us to be smaller than it actually is. So what's the importance of this? Well, this gives us a testable way of finding out what model of the universe is correct. We send the COBE satellite to outer space. We, it maps us the sky, and we do tests on that. If we find that this is what we're getting, that means the universe is more flat. If we find this, kind of behavior, we'll conclude the universe is negatively curved. If we find this behavior, we'll conclude the universe is positively curved. So in a minute, I'll tell you what the conclusion has been so far. OK, now we go to this page again. OK, so I, I, don't, I already talked about the parallel line and the triangle, the circle, the circle, the circle and the diameter. And now let's talk about this one here. So what does it mean here? The number of galaxies as a function of distance. 
So if the universe is flat, what you will find is that as you go away from us, the number of galaxies will increase, kind of linearly, you see? So if you double the distance from us, there should be two times as many galaxies from us. If you triple the distance, three times as many galaxies. And so the picture that goes with that is like this. So basically, if we're in the middle, if you, dub, if you have a certain distance, you count how many galaxies there are, and if you double that distance, there should be two times as many galaxies. Triple that distance, three times as many galaxies. So it's a linear relationship. This also gives us a testable way to find out which model we are, you see? We, we measure the number of galaxies, we estimate the number of galaxies within a certain distance, then we double that distance, we estimate the number of galaxies, and then we figure out, wait, is it linear or is it not linear? If it's positive curly curved space, you're going to find it looks more like this. this. This is kind of like a logarithmic behavior. It kind of plateaus. See here how it goes up, but then it starts plateauing. It will look more like this. So what does that mean? If we measure the number of galaxies within a certain distance, we're going to find there's a lot of them. If we double the distance, not too many more are added. You see? If we triple the distance, not too many more are added. Okay? So no matter where you live, you will find that behavior. If you, if you live in the Andromeda galaxy, you can double, triple, quadruple your distance. You're gonna, no matter where you live, you're always going to find that there are more galaxies that are closer in on you than farther away. Uh, I mean, farther away, they're not going to be as many. Why? Because space will be curved positively. It's kind of hard to visualize that, you know, because it's four-dimensional. But space will be curved in such a way that you will feel like you are being crowded by galaxies, you see? And that's what it means logarithmic. Now, if it's negatively curved space, it's going to look like this. So if you double the distance, a lot more galaxies. Triple the distance, a lot more galaxies. So you're going to find that there aren't too many galaxies near you, and then all of a sudden they start appearing more and more and more and more. So what will that look like? Then you go over here, it will look like that. So you'll be in the middle, you'll go a certain distance, there aren't too many galaxies. You feel kind of lonely, you know. You double the distance, a lot more. And then triple the distance, a lot, lot more, you see. So you will feel like more of the galaxies are farther away than you, than closer to you, you see. Well, based on this, which one is our conclusion? Based on all the studies we've done, based on the satellites we've sent, based on anything that we can imagine, our conclusion so far is that the universe is more flat, flat behavior, okay? We find that the number of galaxies is uniformly increasing, and then going back to that hot spot, we find that the hot spots are just about as big as they appear. So pretty much every testable method that we have to test the shape of the universe so far has led us to see this behavior, the flatness behavior.